Good evening, everyone, and welcome um, to a special board meeting Wednesday, December 14th. This is our organizational board meeting. We're very, very happy that you're here. This is a joyous um, night to swear in uh, board members. If you need um, a translator tonight, we have Urania Lopez over here, who's our district translator, and you can um, get your translation set up. Eva? Si ocupa servicio de traducción, la señora Urania López le puede ayudar con ese servicio. And we, we are not going to have any speaker cards tonight, right? We, we, we do. do. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, if there are people who would like to speak on a non-agendized item tonight, oh, sorry, on an agendized item tonight, um, you need to fill out a yellow card in the back and bring it up here to Eva, and she'll pass it on down. Um, and tonight we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance um, with Oscar Soto. Will you do you mind leading us? Thank you. Thanks, Trustee Soto. So we will be swearing in four trustees, including myself this evening. County Supervisor Zach Friend will administer the oath of office for myself um, from a remote location. And it looks like he's already online with us. So thank you, Zach, for being here tonight. Um, so, I, so right now is when he would administer my oath. Oh, OK. Do I need to stand up somewhere by the podium? or? Yes, we'll have you. Um, we'll have you stand right at the mic. Oh. It's a whole new world. Hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. Hey. hey. So it's wonderful to be here with all of you tonight. And I'm honored to be swearing you in, Kim. And if you could raise your right hand. I, state your name. On my mic. I, Kimberly DeSerpa. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. 
that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I shall support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or, or purpose of evasion. And that I will well. And that I will well. And faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, um, Supervisor Friend, for your um, leadership and your friendship over the years. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your life to swear me in. Thank you. Thank you. And next up, we'll have County Supervisor Greg Caput will administer the oath of office for Trustee Daniel Dodge Jr. and Trustee Olivia Flores. And come to the podium. We're live streaming, I think, aren't we? Yeah. So we have okay. people at home watching. Yeah, my name's uh, Greg Caput. I'm on the County Board of Supervisors for District 4. I'm very honored to be here and uh, to do the swearing in. And uh, I have five children. They all go to public schools. Uh, I have a son uh, at uh, Watsonville High School. And, uh, and I'll explain real quick, too, after. And then I have two girls at Cesar Chavez uh, Middle School in the sixth grade, and I have two daughters in, at uh, Minnie White School uh, in Watsonville in the first grade. And uh, they're uh, two sets of twins, so that's why I said the two are in the sixth grade, two are in the first grade. Uh, and right after this, I'm gonna run off. Uh, the, our son has a football uh, awards night uh, tonight at Watsonville High. It starts at 6. I, I told him I'll be there a little late. And then at the same time, the first graders, uh, um, uh, Claire and Lorraine, uh, have a posada at uh, Minnie White School. And Santa Claus is coming. And that starts at 6 o'clock six also. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to make them both. Uh, Santa Claus comes late. So... Uh, I'll make it in time. And uh, so anyway, it's uh, wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. And uh, so we'll, uh, Daniel, will do your first. And, uh, Can we slide back over to the mic? I'm sorry. That would be great. Just because we have an, an audience watching from home. Or we can do it either way. You, uh, we'll Thank you, Supervisor Keppett. Uh, I, and state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm, Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the, Constitution of the, United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States 
and the Constitution of the State of California and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will, uh, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Great, hey, thanks a lot. I just want to I just want to say that thank you Greg you know you've been a member of this community for a long time and I just wanted to say thank you thank you to all everybody that's here um, I dragged my daughter out here too so she's my support but thank you everybody I'm glad to be back and I look forward to continue to support the people of Watsonville our schools and our children thank you And then, uh, okay, I'll, okay, uh, uh, I, state your name, that's good, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies foreign and, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. There we go. Good job. I just want to thank everyone who helped me during my campaigning and everyone who's here, my husband, my children, my parents, Ed, and thank you, Greg. You were I looked up to you and how you ran your campaigns and how you, you know, support our, our city. And I hope to do the best by PBUSD, our children, and our community. Thank you very much. Olivia, come on up. Should I wait for the Not introduction yet. or? Not wait. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Caput. <laughs> and next up, we'll have. <laughs> and next up, we'll have the swearing in of uh, Trustee Jennifer Holm. And this will be by Tony Nunez. He, you're on the PV Health 
district. Yeah, I'm on, exactly. I'm on the board of directors for the Pajar Valley Healthcare District, uh, which oversees Watsonville Community Hospital. So um, it's an honor, Jen. Thank you for having me do this. Um, so raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, Jennifer Holmes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States that I yeah. the Constitution of the United the States, of the United States. And, the of the and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. <laughs> discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. Tony, I just wanted to say thank you for your service on the hospital board, for your many years of service with the Register Pajaroni and, and your new roles with Community Bridges. So thank you. All right. And thank you for, to my family uh, for supporting me in all of the things that I do, especially for, for this. And thank you very much. taking care of some housekeeping and we'll move on with our agenda in a moment. Thank you, Tony. So next up will be approval of our agenda, item 2.1. Looking for a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Motion carries six. Do I have to call out the empty seat? Six zero. Six zero. Great. Thank you. Next up is item 3.1, public comment on our annual organizational meeting. And I think we do have some speaker cards in. Yes, we have five cards. And um, these are all items related to the annual organizational meeting. Um, I'll call Rebecca Royston first. Hello, hi, Dr. Rodriguez, Board of Trustees, Cabinet members. My name is Rebecca Royston, and I am the chair of PVFT's COPE Committee, Committee on Political Education, and I also teach second grade at Radcliffe Elementary. I just saw Dr. Rodriguez there earlier today. Hello again. Um, I wanted to take a moment to congratulate uh, Daniel Dodge Jr. and Jennifer Holm and Kim DeSerpa for retaining their seats. Um, it's evident in our time spent together in town halls and candidate forums that um, you care very deeply about our community and our students. And I look forward to working with you more this year. I also wanted to take a moment to welcome Olivia Flores to our Board of Trustees and congratulate you on a successful campaign. We look forward to getting to know you more and building a relationship with you and our members. And the purpose of our school board is to support our students, their families, and everyone on the ground in their educational journey. And I am hopeful in what this board can accomplish this year. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Next is um, Joan Ling um, Swissler. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joan Ling Swizzler. I am a teacher at Pacific Coast Charter School right here in our district office. And as I know you're having your um, organizational meeting tonight, I wanted to uh, say a thank you to all of you for all that you've done for our schools, for our uh, students, our teachers, 
and I'm really excited about uh, 2023, and um, I'm hoping that as you prepare for your roles in the coming year that you consider the needs of our um, of our charter schools, our alternative schools. We're the little guys that sometimes serve the, the kids that don't really fit in elsewhere, who have anxiety, who may not have su succeeded at their neighborhood schools. Um, PV, um, sorry, PCCS actually uh, serves a little under 200 students from K to 12. Um, and um, we have a variety of kids from uh, different backgrounds and a lot of times they are just not wanting to go to school until they find us because we find a way to individualize their instruction. Uh, so I wanted to congratulate Trustee Flores. I know that you were very active at Charter School of the Arts, and so I'm hoping that you can help uh, keep the spirit of, the, of our district charters uh, alive and thriving. And um, thank you for all that you do again. Thank you. And you're welcome. I, I welcome you to visit um, our charter schools because sometimes people don't know what, we, what it is that we do. So I'll be emailing our trustees so that you can contact me if you'd like to come in and take a look. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And next, Chris Webb. Um, I want to first uh, thank Trustee Shocker and Roscoe for their service on this board. And I want to congratulate Board President Kim DeSerpa on her reelection and commend her for the way she's presided over this board. I feel like you've done a good job, especially in the face of some difficult moments, including last week. And with that, I want to say how I appreciate how these meetings are run and say that I feel like this board does its best to honor principles of democracy and good government and that what well, with not censoring the public and being willing to extend meetings as needed. And I know for a fact that not all districts do that. So thank you to the board. Uh, I also want to congratulate uh, Trustee Flores on her election and welcome her to the board and I say that the seat that you occupy has traditionally been one that's been a strong advocate for students and teachers and parents, and I, I hope to see you carry that tradition forward. Um, I'd, and also, I just want to say that those groups, teachers and students and parents, like we need you. We need you to, to push the district to acknowledge when they make mistakes and to correct those mistakes. And um, also, please urge the district to respect and honor the work of its teachers before they leave in disaffection uh, make efforts to ensure PVUSD lives up to its slogans. Please push PVUSD to support proven programs and policies developed and refined over time by stakeholders at the site level. We have like great institutional knowledge that we should be capitalizing on. Um, also with that, I, I hope in the new year to see my site of Renaissance uh, hold a meeting to discuss what um, effective PBIS and MTSS looks like. And after I discuss this more with my admin, I, I hope to be able to invite you and Trustee Holm um, to, to come and, and attend that and, and see what that looks like. And uh, also, congratulations to Trustee Holm and Daniel Dodge on your reelection. And happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Wait on this one. Okay, um, now um, Nelly Vaquera Boggs. Good evening, board. Um, I'm here and I guess in dual capacities. Uh, my name is Nelly Vaquera Boggs. I am an educator in this district, I am a bilingual educator. Um, I have taught in middle schools math and science and a newcomer teacher and I've taught elementary. Um, I'm also the currently the elected president for the um, Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. This is my fourth year uh, and so I am the elected representatives representative for our unit. Um, so what a great way to close out the year. Uh, thank you Kim for your year of service as the president. Uh, welcome Olivia, um, Olivia Flores <laughs> and, and I, I want to say Miss Flores and I think I, I should use your first and last names anyways. Um, you heard some of our teachers already speak and I really do rely on them to 
present to our board trustees the the real um, experiences of being in the classroom, of imparting the ed education that is asked of them. And I come to you from a global perspective in hearing all of the um, concerns that are brought forth from our members and then work with the district on figuring out how to problem solve. And so I come to you when I speak to you um, to let you know of the challenges that we face. They are not always the same as what we see nationally, and I don't want to really use the national issues as an excuse to say, well, this is how it is, because things can be better. And so I really do hope that the 2023 year does bring some um, growth mindset, actually, to the administrative portion of our district, district and um, and also to yourselves in that working with us to ensure that we have teachers in the classroom for our students, thousands who, who, have, who don't currently. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. And our last speaker, um, Radhika Kirkman. Good evening, President Serpa, for your last evening. Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodriguez, I also want to um, say a big thank you to uh, Jennifer Shocker and Maria Roscoe, who are not here, for their years of service on the board and supporting the students and staff and families in our district, as well as thank you to Kim DeSerpa for your year as president presiding over the board. Um, similar to what my other colleagues said, um, I've, I look at the role of the board as overseeing the mission of our district, right, and, and ensuring that we are doing everything we can to to enact that mission and so to lift up right our students our families and our community and so the way a good leader does that is by listening to the stakeholders and the stakeholders for for you all are the staff right we have the the support staff the classified staff and we have our educators out there working with the students day in and day out so i just w want to encourage you all to reach out to those stakeholders and to listen to them and to go out to those sites that you represent and see what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis and what experiences our students are going through, our staff is going through, and how that impacts their families and their community because that is our job, is to ensure we are actually lifting up the students, their families, and this community and the staff that provides those services. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? None. None, okay, thank you. Uh, next up, we'll have our annual organizational meeting. Uh, item 4.1 is a recognition of outgoing <laughs> board officers, and this will be presented by Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, last board meeting was Maria Rosco's last meeting. We knew that was going to happen. So I, I already did say um, kind words about um, Maria, and she was our vice president. Um, and so I'm supporting that role right this very moment because she's not here. Um, but we will soon have a new one. And then I wanted to just thank um, Kim DeSerpa for being our president. So many of you might not know, but she, um, we meet. Um, at least twice a week. Um, we have it scheduled to where um, we check in with each other, talk about um, what is happening, and move, um, try to move the work forward. And so I just appreciate always, um, every Monday, I can count on you starting my week. Every Monday morning early, we're on the phone um, doing that work, and then on Thursdays. So um, I so appreciate it. So I, we did get a token of our appreciation for you um, because um, of all the people I know, you are probably one of the most courageous, kind, and caring people. If people don't know, generally if you talk to um, Kim about 7, 8 o'clock at night, she's actually still working with patients, and she's still going above and beyond for them, um, just like she goes above and beyond for us. And so here is recognition for you. Thank you for being a great president. Thanks, Michelle. I'm really, there's um, something special about sitting uh, in the board president's seat because um, 
you can convey a sense of warmth and attention to people when they come to the podium and sometimes that's not easy if you're a community member or a parent or, or a teacher or staff. Um, so I hope you felt that from me this year because I do care deeply about um, our district and about everybody in it. Um, always putting kids right firmly and in the center of um, all decisions that I make. Um, thank you, Michelle, for your work this last year. The last three years have been very difficult for all superintendents and um, you've done it beautifully. You've made it look easy. So um, I wanna thank you too for, for the work and thank this board for some of the hard things that we've been through together. Um, so it was my, my pleasure uh, to serve as board president and I'm looking forward to being able to pay closer attention to the content as just a regular trustee. So thank you. Were there any public speakers to this discussion item? None. Okay, great. <clears throat> Any other comments from the board? Just Jen? Thank you. Just thank you. Uh, I, I know what it is, how challenging it is, the role, and thank you for the, the year of service that you put into that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, Trustee Soto? I wanna thank uh, Trustee President DeSerpa for her service as well for taking on that role. Uh, I, when I initially came onto this board, I was uh, the vice president briefly. And uh, it, it is a heavy uh, burden uh, in that position and it takes a lot of time, especially with work schedules and everything. I know my personal work schedule is so crazy that it's hard just to get into town on time to, to make some of these uh, meetings. But uh, thanks again. Okay, um, so next up we'll have item 4.2. Sorry. Oh, it's, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Trustee Acosta. Just trying to get that on. Um, thank you, President um, Trustee DeSerpa, for your year of service uh, serving as our board president. I will echo that too. Um, I also just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge our outgoing um, Trustee Orozco, who is now City Councilwoman Orozco. Um, Trustee Dodge Jr. and I were. Um, able to be at last night's swearing in ceremony and see that for her. And I just, um, as a resident of the city of Watsonville, really look forward to the good things I think we're gonna see in the future coming out of hopefully from our city council with her there. And um, I think she's got a really uprising career in politics and she may even be our first female Hispanic president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and I get to say, I get to say, not only did I know her, do I know her, but I served with her, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Trustee Acosta, it was really nice. Okay, so now we'll move on to item 4.2, election of the new board president. Um, are there, is there anyone here who's sitting tonight who would like to put their hat in the ring for the presidency? That's the first step, okay. And on this side of the table, we have Jen Holm. Is there anyone on this side? Okay, Jen, would you like to let us know why you would like to serve as a president? Um, I am familiar with the role. I have served before. I believe in fairness for all of the trustees and serving as president, serving the district as a whole, you know, not playing favoritism, not playing north zone, south zone, but serving the district and our students and our, our staff as a whole. Okay. And I will serve fairly. Great. I guess with that, I'll make a nomination um, for Jennifer Holm uh, to serve in, as a board president. Okay. I'd like to um, second your nomination, but if I can make a comment. Um, I would just echo everything you just said about yourself when you served as board president. Um, and for that, I am willing because President Trustee DeSerpa jumped me on that um, and she got to make the nomination, but at least I will get to second it. And you do serve um, our community and our district with a, a total fairness and whole. And I think you are the right person to lead this district um, or the board, excuse me. Um, <laughs> sorry, not taking it away from you, Michelle, <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez, yeah. sorry, um, to lead the board, thank you. So with that, I second. Okay, so we have a first and a second. I'm gonna call the vote, we'll do a roll call.
Trustee Dodge, your vote. Yes. Trustee Acosta, your vote. Yes. Trustee Soto, your vote. Aye. Yes. Trustee Flores, your vote. Yes. Trustee Holm, your vote. Yes. President DeSerpa, your vote. Aye. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Jen. So I think I need to hand over the reins, right? Okay, you want to trade? Trade seats? So moving on to item 4.3, uh, welcome by new board president, welcome. Um, just, so thank you uh, for Trustee Acosta for your kind words, I appreciate that. Um, I look forward to serving in this capacity for the next year and I, I promise to treat the community and everyone here fairly and move forward with the best interests of the district at heart. So we'll move on to item 4.4, election of the new board vice president. Um, is there anyone who is interested in serving as a board vice president? Is there anyone? Okay. Um, I will like to throw my name into it as well. Okay. And I would be honored and look forward to serving with you, should that be the outcome. Do you, do either of you want to say anything about why you would like to serve? I was mostly offering because I didn't see any other interest. <laughs> I'm happy to serve as the vice president. Um, you know, I've had, I've served as president for four terms and vice president multiple terms. So um, anyway, thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, I feel that um, I will learn a lot under your leadership in this role, and I would really like that opportunity and to be able to extend that. So, thank you. Do we have any nominations? I'll nominate Trustee Acosta. Okay, I have a first. I'd like the second. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Trustee Flores, your vote? Yes. Trustee DeSerpa, your vote? No. Trustee Soto, your vote? Aye, yes. Trustee Acosta, your vote? Yes. Trustee Dodge, your vote? Aye. President Holm, your vote? Yes. Motion carries, 5-1. Uh, All right, item 4-5, uh, approve a 2023 board meeting schedule. Uh, uh, item will be presented by Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you so much. So you will see um, the dates are fairly similar to what we've done in the last several years. Um, as is customary, we do a late board meeting in January because of the holiday, because we go on a three-week break. Um, most people, at least on this side of the room, don't get, don't get that three-week break. I'll, I'll take about five days off, but we still, for staff reasons, we do it late. Um, February and March, we always do the second and fourth, and so that's fairly typical. April, you'll see that we do a special board meeting for student recognition, and then we do the late board meeting in April, again, because of spring break. 
Um, June, May and June are fairly similar. It's the second and fourth. July again is late. Um, we do only one board meeting in July and that's on the 26th. Um, and then in August, as is customary, we started this now five years ago, or I guess it would be six now, six years ago. Um, we do a special board meeting for my evaluation. We had tried it the first year um, within closed session and it just wasn't enough time. And so we now do a special board meeting um, where I present a pretty lengthy presentation. Um, and then the 23rd is our regular schedule board, our regular schedule board meeting. Um, September is fairly normal with two board meetings as is October 2nd and 4th. Um, November, again, we just have one board meeting and that's due to the holiday, again, for um, Thanksgiving. And then December, we have one board meeting as well. And then just because of the law that passed several years ago and we can't, um, we can't do the appointment until after the second Friday, um, then we come back um, and do our organizational meeting, which would be on the 13th. So I'm asking for um, the approval of this, um, of the schedule. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, any comment from the board? I'd like to make a motion to approve, unless yeah. any of my other colleagues have questions or comments to any of the dates. Right, we have a first. A second. All right, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0. All right, on to item 4.6, uh, coordinate board representation to district and community committees. Dr. Yeah. Michelle Rodriguez. Thank you so much. So we have 14 committees, um, which we can have in many cases up to three. Um, what you'll notice, and if you, um, you should see on the document, on, there, the only time when we can't have three, we actually note it. Um, um, we always do agenda setting first, um, and so that is the president, the vice president, and then one additional board member. We try to make sure that all geographical areas are supported. Um, so in this case, it would be um, it would be President Holm, um, Vice President Acosta, and then we would need um, one other additional board member um, to be part of agenda setting. And it it. It is generally at the discretion of the president, but um, whichever you would like to do, President Holm. In, in the past, it had been the outgoing president. We had changed that around a, a little bit in previous years, one, because of, of various changes on the board. Mm -hmm. All three of the agenda setting committee members, so. I am very happy to be on the agenda setting yes. committee continue. I would like mm -hmm. I would like at least one person to continue. So okay, yes. that would be great. We will um, we will make it so great. Okay, and then um, then for the next one is CAC with SELPA. So previously we have it on there for you so that you can see the 2022. But previously it was um, Ms. Serpa, um, Dr. Holm, and um, and then Ms. Shocker who can't be it. And so. Um, who would like to um, continue with that? I would like to continue with it, but again, I've, I've been able to serve on it for four years, so if there are three others, <laughs> I'll defer, but I would like to continue. <clears throat> it is a wonderful committee. Is there any other interest from a board member? Olivia, it's like special ed committee and it meets like quarterly, I think, right? Isn't it quarterly? It's a good one. Um, it, we put the frequency, yeah. it's once a month, yeah. Oh, yeah, once a month, okay. Mm -hmm. I would, be interested. would you like to do that? Okay, great. Okay. Sorry, Sorry my apologies. I'm confused. Are you going to continue to serve on that yes. with Flores? Is yes. that? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank and you. And we can have up to one more if, we, if someone would like to do okay. it. I, no, I, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, um, if we'll continue to move on. So District um, English Le uh, Learner Advisory Committee, so our DLAC. So I am present every month on that as well. Um, and so this is for our English learners. Who's serving on that currently? It was um, Maria and Jennifer Shocker. Uh-huh, okay. And um, let me look at the frequency. It is once a month, it's um, on that, it's on the Tuesday. Um, I'd like to serve on that now. 
it isn't virtual. It is in person. That's okay. I can make that. Okay. Anyone so, else? And Danny? Danny? Great. Thank you, Danny. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, so um, we will continue on. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. Um, intergovernmental committee meetings. Um, and so we can have um, up to three on there. Currently, it is um, um, Trustees De Serpa, um, Daniel Judge Jr., and then previously it was Jennifer Shocker. D Dr. Reeves, can you confirm? Because you said up to three, but right there it says two. Oh, I'm sorry. You are correct. Thank you for is it, seeing so that. So is it up to two? It, uh, for this one, it is up to two. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, I would like to ask that maybe um, President Trustee Dr. Holm, that's going to be a lot to spew out <laughs> <laughs> every time, like if you would be open to serving an I because you're in the north, I'm in the south, and we're both in leadership on the board, so I would like to make that recommendation, but of course, the final decision's to you. And I think that's good to have the spread because this when it first began, it was city and school board, but now it's county and school board. I'm in the city, you're in the county. Unfortunately, I have conflicts with two of the dates. And I think those are virtual, correct? Um, we do hold them virtually. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I mean, you could defer your spot. Yeah. Uh, we can do it trustee just, a uh, no, it's a, a no, I, I, I appreciate that. I, just the first two, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to miss and I, Okay, well, with that, I'd like for you to consider me mm -hmm. as one sure. um, from leadership and then um, someone else. Is there I mean, else we have um, Trustee Soto, who's on the other side and represents also, you know, which lacks a lot of uh, representation yeah. in some of these meetings. Unfortunately, at 4 p.m., I'm still at work. Yep. So then maybe Trustee DeSerpa. It's a really hard time for me too. I'm in Salinas until very late in the evening. So. And these are virtual, correct? They're virtual. N and still isn't, okay. Well, then that's I'm, down to two. I don't mind serving on this intergovernmental again, but um, it's a really hard, hard time for me. Well, I think if it opens it up to um, maybe um, Trustee Dodge Jr. and Trustee Flores if they're interested. Olivia will be on there. Great. Okay, now we will go to um, Migrant Head Start Policy Advisory. And this is an important one because it's required in order for us to maintain our funding. Um, this person, by going, um, allows us to not have to have um, such significant pr presentations to the board, taking up board time. Um, and so this is, leg um, this is an important position for us to have, and we definitely need at least one person able to go. It was previously um, Daniel Dodge Jr. and Jennifer Shocker. Trustee Dodge Jr., did you want to continue? Yes, I'll continue. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to continue? Or I, would can, I can make a 6.30 on Thursday. All right, mm -hmm. great. Great, great. Thank you to both of you. Um, now, Pajaro Valley Prevention Assistance. Um, currently, we have one position for a board member open for this. Um, currently, it is um, Kim DeSerpa. That's part of it, and she's actually the treasurer. Would you like to continue with that? I would, yeah. Okay. All right. And um, now we'll go to District Safety Committee. Um, and so, that um, currently is um, Kim DeSerpa and Daniel Dodge Jr. And do you two want to continue? I can't make it two o'clock. Okay. Trustee Dodge Jr. I can't because I broke on the mellow committee as well. Okay. Is there someone else who would like to serve on that committee? These are conducted virtually, according to this, and it's at two, these are virtually. looks like these are days of board meetings, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Um, Am it, I correct? It looks like they're held. I'm sorry. Let me pull the calendar. 
Um, the January would not be um, because we're doing it the twenty the twenty fifth, but um, the March and May very well may be. So no, the January twenty fifth is the day of a board meeting, correct? Oh, these are the old ones. Um, that that is that is correct. Those are so um, board there, meetings. I, I I think I need more. That is it a Wednesday? They are Wednesdays. Yes. Okay, so that is. But the March is the in between, and then the May is the in between. Okay, I, I can do that. Okay. Look forward to it, Clint. <laughs> is there anyone else that would like to be on that committee? You know, uh, can I just say these times are so inconvenient for working people, and I know we have to have meetings when staff can attend, but for those of us who have jobs that are very, um, Critically Rigorous. important mm -hmm. for us to be with with what we're doing. Like it's almost impossible to make these appointments. So if they're early in the morning, if they're later in the evening, it's much easier for your board mm -hmm. to attend these. For those of us who have full time jobs, yeah. we'll note that if it's yeah. parent related, we always do it nighttime. But for staff ones, it is we generally do do it during the day so that staff can attend. Yeah. Or even over a lunch hour, I think would be easier for both Oscar and I yeah. okay it, it sounds like maybe trustee Soto might be interested in this but if it in could accommodate his work schedule and and it is virtually yeah so I mean the lunch hour or I mean a lot of the time frames are conflicting with my schedule at work because on the committee or the safety committee meetings between 2 and 3 p.m. I'm running inspections at work my my schedule is already set mm -hmm. with appointments so it'd be, it'd be yeah, a little the, conflicting for me to to yeah. break from that to yeah I couldn't as much I as I would love to yeah I couldn't promise the change um, at the very moment because we contractually are required to have participation for both unions and so I can't I can't say that we could for sure change the time at this point we'd have to confer so if that's possible then at that point do you have to bring it back to the board no, or I could, could I you could just say out. we were able to change it maybe it's four to five five to six whichever and are you still sure. interested I'll, I'll reach out if we can change the time yeah no problem perfect okay so now we'll go to spectra um, which is the arts education committee and um, it was Jennifer Holm and Jennifer Shocker previously and I, I would definitely like to continue okay great do I have another member who's interested? Okay, so we will. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, um, now we'll move on to Healthy Start Steering Committee. And so um, prior, this was, now this is held um, fairly infrequently, but prior it was um, Mrs. Serpa, um, Maria Rosco, and Jennifer Shocker previously. Anyone interested in this one? Yeah. Okay, so I will um, I will go ahead and um, work with this um, with our student services and see if we can change the time and then we'll inform the board through the weekly communication. Okay? Thank you. All right, okay, CT advisory board. Um, previously, it was Kim DeSerpa and Maria Rosco, and um, there are um, two advisory board meetings and um, two site visits, and these are in the evening from 5 to 6.30. And did you want to, Trustee DeSerpa, did you want to continue on that one? Great. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Any other, anybody else that would like to participate? Career technical education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just received. Uh, one million ten thousand dollars just yesterday for CT programming 
for a grant, another grant, yeah. I, I would like to, but these are on days right after a board meeting, based on looking at the schedule, and I'm, I'm just not 100% sure that I could commit to that, but I, I might be able to. Want me to put you down and try? It's iffy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, why don't, yeah, why don't we go ahead and put you down, because we don't have a third, so it's not a conflict. Okay, and, I, and I'm sorry, can you repeat the Healthy Start? Who was on that? Um, previously, it was um, Kim, Maria, and Jennifer Shocker. No, who now? Um, currently, we have no one, and oh. I'm going to go back to student services and see if they can change that time. Okay. Since that okay. time is not, no one can make that time. Okay, thank you. And um, so now for Health Benefits Committee. Um, this is in an observe-only capacity, um, and previously it was um, President Holm. I would like to continue on this. Uh, is, is this one that could also have multiple people or is it one? Um, it can, but it's for observe capacity yeah. only. But yes, we could have more than one. I'm happy to continue it. And I, if anyone else is available, it's, it's a fascinating you know, a committee to, to learn about the benefits and what our various uh, stakeholders need for benefits and all that. Any takers? Sounds good. Um, so PVEF, um, so PVEF, um, we have, um, that structure has changed. We reorg the bylaws. Um, and so currently we have, um, Jennifer Holm, who is um, part of that, and we need um, one additional board member who wishes to be part of the foundation. And it would be for a three-year term. So we're doing some pretty good work with the foundation. And so if we could have one additional board member, that would be great. Is there another board member who would like to join our fund? It, it, it varies, so oh, it, 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 it has been a lot of times Wednesdays that are not a board meeting Wednesday is when we've traditionally done it, but this, the first one that we're doing on the way back, um, we had already decided it would be January 9th. Okay, I'll And try. we do do it late, we do it from 6 to 7.30 and we do hold it virtually. Oh great, okay, I'll do that. Um, and then board members in the past have been able to also appoint somebody from their area, their um, area, and I know I had one and then he had dropped away and I need to identify another person, right? But yeah. do you have the full complement of people needed on the board? Yeah, so because of the challenges that we've just had the last three years, um, there was a request to look at bylaw several years ago and when we did that, um, we made the decision and then subsequently voted on changing the bylaws so that it would be two standing board members and that the rest would be community members from various parts just just because no one was able to provide names for years and so we, we shifted the structure. Dr. Rodriguez, can, excuse me, President Trustee Holm, um, can you confirm again who are the current sitting two board members? Well, or, right now it would just be Jennifer Holm, um, and then it uh, was. Well, previously it was it was Maria Rosco, okay, um, and Jennifer Holm. And so, for the five remaining areas, can you confirm for us? Do we have appointees currently in those positions? We don't have all the appointees. So we have um, my appointees, which are um, two. T well, now one's an administrator, but he used to be a teacher. So I have Jorge and um, Catherine Bermudez are my appointees. Mm -hmm. um, so he is, he just promoted up, but now he is the assistant principal at Rolling Hills. Mm -hmm. And um, Catherine is the, is she a literacy coach? Yes. Literacy coach, thank you. Mm -hmm. Literacy coach, thanks for, she was a teacher, a literacy coach at um, SD. And what about the remaining board? And positions? then the remaining board, um, we have, um, Maria Rosco is is on is going to be voted on, um, and then we have um, 
Jennifer Shocker that's going to be voted on. And then how many positions do we have left? Two, three? I think there's three additional that what? then we need after that. One. There's going to be a two. total of, of Isn't nine. it four? No, you, you are on it. I am. Pre I trustee. Just, I just okay. So yeah. then Trustee Soto, myself, and Dodge Jr. have vacancies. Well, we we shifted we shifted we shifted it to where the bylaws no longer are links specifically to the board members. So it's more we're doing it more like Parks and Rec is currently doing it, and also the PAL program is doing it. So yeah, because I remember when we originally started that, it was that the if the board member wasn't sitting on it, it had to be someone from the trustee area mm -hmm. of that board member. So what part of that has been eliminated? That has a whole? So is it the board as a may, whole voting on it? May I suggest, just because the, the, since the PVF isn't a agendized item, but just like the appointment is, that maybe we have a board presentation for about yeah, the Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just yeah. trying to understand no, the no, no. makeup No, no, I totally understand. I'm just trying to figure out if that. OK, if so I think it's item. just community members at large now. It's community members yeah. at large for mm -hmm. And, are, and we as the board are voting on who those community members are. No. No, the, 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 the PBEF board, board does, is the one yeah, voting they're, they're, on. Yeah. Thank, I, thank you. I appreciate no the problem. clarification. Now I'm I, We can agendize clear. it, though. But I, but no, I I'm, I'm, I'm crystal clear now, I think. So now we have Trustee DeSerpa yeah. and Jennifer yeah. and you. And you're available I, to have one more board member. No, wait, wait, so it's two. two. Oh, it's two. Yeah, awesome. I have one more year of a three-year term. Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you yeah. for the clarification. No problem. It. Okay, um, we just have two more, everybody. Um, Adult Education Advisory Committee, and so this was with Dr. Bilicic, and it too is um, during during the day, um, from ten to twelve. And so who would, um, currently it's Daniel Dodge Jr. and Jennifer Shocker who are part of the Adult Ed Advisory Committee. Trustee Dodge Jr., did you want to continue? Yeah. Okay. Is anyone else interested? Unfortunately, the timing is better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, we will, we will depend on Daniel Dodge Jr. to be there. Um, okay, so the last one is district-wide green team, and so previously it was Maria Rosco and Jennifer Schocker, and um, we do need um, two board members. Um, that was um, part of its um, formation was that it would be two board members, so I'd, I need two board members. We do a lot of really good work with this group. Um, so. Okay, great. Trustee Flores, anyone else? Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it. We will um, we will place this in the weekly update for everyone so that they have it and they're able to see it um, visibly. And thank you so much. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the names that were um, put forth for the different committees of the Board of Trustees. I'll second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0. All right, moving on to item 4.7, call for nominations to CSBA's Delegate Assembly. Yes, so we have successfully submitted once an application um, and it, at that time, it was um, Karen Austinson. Um, she was selected. I helped her write write the nomination, and um, and then, um, of course, we weren't able to continue with that. Um, so it would be great for us to have someone that would be present during this time. Um, within the content of the item, it speaks to what would be required. So you're um, serving two-year terms. Um, it would begin in April of 2023. Um, so if you could go to the actual item itself so they could see what I'm, I'm reading. Um, 
and um, then it would sunset on March 31st. So the assembly, delegate assembly meets twice a year, so you would be asked. So I highlighted for you um, the dates and also the locations for you. Um, so it is, they, you would need to be able to meet with them May 20th to the 21st in Sacramento and November 28th to the 29th in San Francisco. Um, and um, I, how I ha as I did in the past, I would be happy to help any board member that would like assistance writing the nomination. I would be happy to help assist or um, you, would, you could write it and just um, make sure that they receive it prior to January 7th of 2023 so you have to make sure and um, just have it, all the paperwork in before that time so I can assist if someone um, would like to do it is there anyone who is interested in being a delegate I would be interested in being a delegate all right I'll make a motion to approve that. Don't that hate me after it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just looked in one of those dates as a weekend, so that bodes well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah. The one's a weekend and the one's <laughs> right smack in the middle of the week. And so. it's like, yeah, it's like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right after right Thanksgiving. After, yeah. yeah. Anyway. It, it's an it's a annual conference. Those are the dates of the annual conference. Yeah. Uh, Any ideas why they wouldn't put them both on a weekend? Well, so the 28th and 29th is the annual is the annual conference, and so what they do is they do it right before the annual conference, so that they can give feedback and oh, input. Oh, because they, that happens that yeah, way. Yeah. So that what it would be is you would go to that, and then they're assuming you would stay and stay for CSBA conference after that. Get a nice long weekend in San Francisco. <laughs> we have a first. Do we have a second? I, I made the motion. Yeah. I don't, but do we have or, a second? I don't know. She made the. I made the motion. She just nominated herself. Just for a second. I'll oh, second. Okay. Okay. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I, should oppo I should oppose my. <laughs> Are you actually opposing it? <laughs> All right. Motion, motion carries Aye. six zero. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, our meeting is adjourned. Wow. This is till January twenty fifth. All right, thank you. Yeah. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah, everyone.